This is the power of positive painting, portraits in oil. Robert Maniscalco comes to you from a rich painting background with commissioned portraits hanging in hundreds of public and private collections throughout the country. Robert began his formal apprenticeship at the age of 19 with his father, internationally renowned portrait artist Joseph Maniscalco, but had unofficially began many years before in his father's studio, where Robert as a very young child painted along and absorbed his father's expert teaching. Like his father, Robert finds great joy in passing on this user-friendly system of painting to students who long for a simple yet reliable method of painting consistently well-painted paintings. So, sit back or get your canvas ready and come with me to enjoy the power of positive painting. Welcome to the power of positive painting, portraits. Now, painting a portrait is a pretty intimidating and daunting task, and so um, I'm going to try not to insult you with any kind of glib techniques or clever tricks, because that's not going to make you a better painter. To paint portraits, we need a method, not a trick or another technique. My method, which I call the power of positive painting, is actually a continuation of a painting method developed by Frank Riley, the renowned teacher from the Art Students League in New York, and passed down to me through my father. The power of positive painting is an effort to demystify the art of painting. These are some examples of my commissioned portraits. Whatever else you may observe about these paintings, they are all the application of some very simple principles of value-based painting. The power of positive painting is a simple, straightforward approach to rendering any subject, regardless of the style or individual tastes of the artists. Now, before we begin, we need to get our inner dialogue to serve us and not hinder us. And the th so if, the first thing to think about is that any painting that we're going to be doing here in this uh, demonstration or that you're going to be doing at home after looking at this tape using a live model uh, is a learning experience. And because of that, you don't want to necessarily get too precious about it. Think about it as throwaway art. And in this way, you can become a little bit more detached about painting. Uh, if you're too passionate about something and you're gripping it hard, it, it's, it's so hard to make progress. So this is a way of opening your mind in a, a little bit more positive mental attitude. In my workshops and classes, I work with so many wonderful, talented people who have been deprived of fundamental information because it's not available in most of today's art schools. And because of this, they often lack the confidence that comes with concrete knowledge. Remember that as an artist, you are not obligated to this frustrating script. Your words have the power to create your reality. If you say you cannot do something, that's true for you. If you say you can, that is also true or tends to become true over time. Certainly as artists, we are creators. Start creating a decisive uh, attack of the painting. So I'm not talking about happy peppy. I'm talking about decisive. And to be decisive, that means we're going to be embracing structure. And all the arts have structure in order for them to be of any use to anybody. Music has scales, harmony, rhythm. Things are divided into meters. They're quantified. This means get louder. This means get softer. You can write a piece of music, and a musician can pick it up and understand what it means. They can decipher it based on some quantitative information that they've developed over the years. Um, in writing, of course, we all know that you have to be able to spell, you have to be able to construct a sentence, you have to have good grammar in order to be able to um, write a book or a novel or a poem or whatever. And the same is true in all other disciplines in science, etc. So today I'm asking you to rely more on your intelligence than your talent. That is, we're going to learn how to organize ourselves a little bit differently and a little bit more carefully than just starting at a blank canvas and just saying, reinvent the wheel every time, <laughs> every time you get going. So I'm talking about combining left and right brain functions. I call it whole brain painting. We need to understand how they work together. Frank Riley attempted to quantify painting in thinking in terms of hue, chroma, and value. And the most important of these elements is value. 
Value means the lightness or darkness of a painting or, or of a color. Hue is simply the name of the color. It's yellow or red or blue. And uh, chroma is the intensity of the color. It's the, the way it departs from neutrality, gray being very neutral, cadmium red being very bright. And so we use value, though, to express light on form or creating the illusion of a three-dimensional background on a two-dimensional surface. Does that sound good? Because that's what we want to be able to do in realism. So let's get to our rendering.